I'm going to give you guys a full review and honest opinions about our time on Royal Caribbean's Symphony of the Seas. <laughs> Welcome back to Cruise News and Booze, where we sit down, have a drink, and talk about all things cruise related. Today, I'm going to be talking all about Royal Caribbean's Symphony of the Seas, our time on it, and our experience, kind of um, our favorite part about the ship. I'm going to be going over the food, boarding process, the room entertainment options, and just other things that really stood out to us about this ship. So if you enjoy this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe so you can see all of our upcoming videos. And let's get right into it. So Symphony of the Seas, of course, is an Oasis class ship. So in a lot of ways, it has a lot of those classic Oasis class features, such as the Boardwalk neighborhood, the Central Park, the Royal Promenade is very similar to some of the other ones. I would say it's most similar to Harmony of the Seas if you've been on that ship. Pretty much identical in most areas, um, but uh, Symphony of the Seas was a really great ship. It was very clean, very well maintained, um, as you would expect from Royal Caribbean. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the boarding process when it came to Symphony because it was the fastest boarding process we have ever had. It was absolutely so smooth, so flawless. We were probably on the ship within 15 minutes, which is absolutely incredible. I don't know if we just were really fortunate with the people we got and the time we got there um, being able to get on really quick, but it was very seamless and smooth. Um, and our luggage got there very quickly as well to the room. So pretty much by the time we got to our room, the luggage was already there, which was fantastic. And it just was a very seamless experience and uh, really set us off on a good pace here. Um, on this ship, we had a boardwalk balcony room. And I talked about this a little bit in another video we did, but I'm just gonna kind of quickly go over our experience in the boardwalk balcony room on Symphony of the Seas. This is our second time staying in a boardwalk balcony. Our first time was on Oasis of the Seas, and we actually really liked the boardwalk balcony because we could watch the aqua theater shows right from our stateroom, and it was great. But on Symphony of the Seas, they do have the Ultimate Abyss, which kind of blocks your view to the Aqua Theater. So that uh, you can't really watch the show like you could before they added that, which was a little disappointing to us. But um, on this particular sailing, the Aqua Theater show, which, you know, the Aqua Theater is in the back of the ship on that boardwalk. And um, the Aqua Theater cast was kind of turning over. They were getting a new cast and um, they were practicing all day, every day. And the unfortunate thing is you can hear the music in your stateroom when they're doing the Aqua Theater show. So with them practicing, we could hear that music all day, every day, which isn't a problem. But unfortunately, they were practicing late into the night up until 12, 31 o'clock one night which is uh, way too late for loud music to be blaring into your room. So we did have to contact guest services and they immediately said, no, they shouldn't be practicing this late at night. Thank you for letting us know. And they quickly put an end to that. This is the one and only time I've ever contacted guest services on any of my cruises. So it's not something I normally do, but um, it was something I did feel was necessary because it's just too late to be doing that. They have, you know, all day pretty much that they were also practicing. So that was just one thing that we really didn't like about this boardwalk room. I think on any other cruise, it would probably be fine um, if they're not practicing, if it's not a new cast coming on, you'll probably be fine in a boardwalk balcony room. But I think if you don't want to take that risk of, music being blared into your room at all hours. Uh, I think maybe a Central Park balcony would be the way to go. Or of course, there's the ocean view if uh, that's more your speed. 
It was a very nice room. It was that classic Oasis balcony room. Has a nice couch and, uh, you know, little TV area, makeup area, all of that good stuff. We enjoyed the room itself. Just that one aspect really kind of was disappointing to us. Moving on to food. Um, so the first night that we were on board, we had dinner at Chops, which is Royal Caribbean Steakhouse. And this was our second time at Chops. We've been a couple more times since then. And this Chops experience was just kind of disappointing. The steaks were just not the quality that we come to know from Chops. Um, they, the two steaks we got looked completely different and it just wasn't that great of an experience. The service wasn't that great. It was kind of slow. So, um, Hopefully, they have improved in some way since then. Some people say that, uh, you know, Symphony has the best chops they've been to. So I really think it all comes down to your server. Our experience wasn't that good. But um, we also went to Wonderland, which is their very experimental, imaginative restaurant. This was our first time at Wonderland, and it was delightful. We had a great time. The service is really good. The waiter really took the time to explain to us the whole idea and concept of Wonderland and then to take the time to pair a menu that was really to our liking. And it was just a wonderful experience all the way around. And I don't know if it was just our first time there. We were really excited or if it really was just a really great experience, but I would highly recommend Wonderland on Symphony of the Seas. Moving on to the main dining room, I know some people really don't have a good experience with the dining on Symphony of the Seas, but for us, we had a great experience. And once again, I think it all comes down to your waiters because ours were amazing. They were on top of things. They were very friendly. They got things out to us quickly and we could get in and out, uh, usually within an hour, which is fantastic. We have no complaints because the food was always came out hot. Um, they never gave us problems if we want to, you know, more of one thing. They really knew what we liked and they always would have our table ready for us when we got there. So uh, we had a great main dining experience. Of course, this can change for Everyone, everyone has a different experience, but for us, we really enjoyed it and it was a excellent experience. Other included options that we really enjoyed on our Symphony of the Seas cruise was El Loco Fresh. And this is the first um, time we got to try El Loco Fresh on one of the Oasis class ships and we really enjoyed it. Um, it's something kind of different for Royal Caribbean that they introduced on the Oasis class ships. And uh, it was something, you know, it's not just your typical hamburgers and hot dogs, things like that. But it's really excellent Mexican food that they have, you know, quesadillas. You can make your own tacos. Uh, you can make, you know, if you really want, you can make burrito bowls, whatever you want. It's really great. And they also have a whole salsa area which is amazing if you're like me and you like a lot of toppings they have all these different salsas and toppings so you can really customize your food they also have a park cafe which i always enjoy on oasis class ships um, they have a really great salad selection especially i noticed on symphony the items that they have for their salads was much more diverse than other oasis class ships i've seen so i really enjoyed that as well as they have for breakfast, they have like their bagels and their sandwiches. I really love pa Park Cafe and I particularly liked it on Symphony because it never seemed crowded. So it's a great way to go if it was a sea day, you didn't want to deal with the chaos in the buffet. You can go down there and have a nice quiet breakfast. Also something we enjoyed a lot on this cruise was the Windjammer, which is the buffet. And I feel like they just did a really great job on the buffet for Symphony of the Seas. It seemed really large. They seemed to have a lot of options. And on different nights for dinner, they would have different themes. They did like a whole dessert area one night that was really extravagant. They had like chocolate waterfalls and all this really great, um, extravagant, elegant desserts. That was really fun to see. We really like dinner and the buffet which is something we don't always really enjoy sometimes but they seem to have really great options they had where they're doing like their freshly made pasta station and they cook it to order and it was just a really great experience.
They also have the Solarium Bistro on uh, Symphony of the Seas, which is in the Solarium, which is the adults only area. This is another place that we liked to frequent, whether it was on sea days or it was a port day. And the, you know, in the morning sometimes the buffet gets really crazy, but the Solarium Bistro sometimes is a little calmer. People don't know about it as much. So if you go to the buffet, it's looking a little crazy. Go check out Solarium Bistro because they have a lot of the same breakfast and lunch options as the Windjammer, but it's easier to find a sea and it's not as hectic. Moving on to activities. I feel like there is so much to do on Symphony of the Seas. Uh, whether it's the ultimate abyss, the zip line, putt putt, ice skating, pools, hot tubs, water slides, uh, they have endless options. Um, they do, of course, laser tag and things like that as well. Things that we particularly enjoyed were the infinity hot tubs on the side of the ship. Uh, on Symphony of the Seas, they have four of these, so it's really great to be able to have four. On other ships, uh, Wonder, they only have two of these, so it's a little harder to get into them, but they offer really great views off the side of the ship. Especially on port days is a great way to get into these hot tubs without any crowds. Great way to have a drink, enjoy the view, sit back and relax. And we really enjoyed on this ship as well that they still had two flow riders. I know on a lot of newer ships that they're coming out with, they're only putting one flow rider on. And let me tell you, that is not enough. Because on Symphony of the Seas, even with two flow riders, there were still lines. They still got really busy. But uh, one of the great things of them having two flow riders is they have one for more beginners and then they have one for um, people who are a little more advanced who have done the flow rider before. And it really helps with just the flow of people. Um, if you want to go and, you know, have a, a great time, if you're experienced, you know what you're doing, you don't feel like there's a giant line of people waiting on you. You can take your time more. And on our time on Symphony of the Seas, especially on port days, they would just let us ride for as long as we wanted until other people came along. So it was a great way to be able to really get a lot of time on the flow riders. So I think if that's something that you're looking for, if you really enjoy the flow riders, um, then maybe one of these ships like Symphony that has two of them still is definitely the way to go. Moving on to some of the bars that we thought were particularly good on Symphony of the Seas. The first one is the Bionic Bar. And um, on Symphony of the Seas, the Bionic Bar was open a lot more than on other Oasis class ships we've been on. On some of the other Oasis class ships, it's hardly ever open or has very limited hours. But on Symphony, it seemed like it was always open when we wanted something. It never was very crowded. And it was just a really fun experience for us to sit down there, you know, watch the little robots make the drink. It was a really fun time. And like I said, it being open more hours definitely made it more convenient. And also was the Rising Tide Bar that we really enjoyed. On Symphony of the Seas, they seemed to have a decent amount of seating on the Rising Tide, so it didn't get as crowded as some of the other ships, which we definitely enjoyed. You could sit there as long as you want it, nice and relaxed, having a drink, enjoying the people watching around you. So um, go if you're going on at Symphony of the Seas, definitely make sure you check out those two bars in particular. Moving on to shows, and I think these shows are some of, one of my favorite lineups in all of the Oasis class ships because it was really spectacular for the most part. There was some misses, but we'll get into that. Um, the first thing I absolutely have to talk about is their Broadway style production of Hairspray. It was fantastic, so memorable. They did a great job. The singers and performers in that, they were just top notch and it was very memorable. They also, one of our favorites that they did was the ice skating show 1977. It had a really great story going on, time travel and all of that. They also did uh, little drones that kind of were like dancing and getting into the performance, which was definitely, definitely good. We liked that. Uh, they also have comedy shows, of course, in the attic, and they had, I think, two comedians on this particular cruise. We enjoyed them, as always. Um, if you can't get into the attic for whatever reason to see the comedy show, you can always see it on the last night. They usually do uh, the comedy show in the main theater. It's a lot easier to get into that. 
Moving back into Studio B Ice Skating, they did a second show actually on Symphony of the Seas, which was called Ice Skate 2.0 which was really fun. It kind of showcased the performers more um, and their personal styles, very bright and colorful and more modern music. Moving on to Hero. So uh, as I said before, the practicing late into the night, putting that all aside, uh, this was going to be the last sailing for the current aqua theater cast and you could kind of tell that they just weren't that into it anymore they kind of were over it and they were ready to get off the ship and get a break so it didn't really come across that they uh you know they were into the show or they were having a particularly good time some of the things that uh they normally do they just skipped on such as the tightrope walker you know didn't want to do that i guess and just kind of slid across versus doing the tightrope walking so you know it was a little disappointing overall i think that it could be a great show if they were a little more into it but it was their last show and they were they were you know already a little checked out but that's okay for the most part it was a great lineup I would just say make sure you get reservations, especially to Hairspray, 1977, and the comedy show for sure. Those are the ones that are going to be the hardest to get into, so make sure you get those reservations as soon as they open up to book. Overall, I would say Symphony of the Seas is a really great ship for anyone. Right now, the great thing about it is you can probably get it for a better price versus, you know, Wonder, Icon, some of these newer ships. So um, I think it's something that could really work for all ages. Whether you have little ones, they have lots of features for little ones. They have the little um, water area specifically with, for them with slides and water buckets and all of that fun stuff. They have the kids areas, but a lot of really fun things that they've done for kids. But I also think there's a lot of things for adults to do as well. As I mentioned, the flow riders especially were really fun to do. We spent a lot of time doing that on this ship. And, you know, they have uh, the solarium area, which is nice. They do have some seating in there, and it is a nice relaxing experience if you want to sit back and relax. I think they have two smaller hot tubs in there and a small pool as well. So it is, if you want to get away from the kids, you have that option too. I think overall, it's a great ship for anyone looking for the Oasis class experience, especially if you're looking for really good entertainment and activities. That is where Symphony of the Seas shines. So if you do enjoy this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to see all of our upcoming videos and we'll see you next time. Cheers.